Okay, so I have watched um, Extreme Rules early this morning. I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning because, you know, you got an early morning job that requires you to wake up at 3 or a quarter after 3. When you on your day off, sometimes you wake up like you're going to work. Like, okay, Saturday I woke up at a normal time, like 8 o'clock, then... Today, I woke up at five. <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> how y'all doing today? Oh, man. So Extreme Rules, it was in Philadelphia, and I love the show. The show was awesome. And um, I like the show much that I even like the people that, you know, contributed like the new ring announcer. I think the SmackDown ring announcer is, is the lady. She, she put her fucking character in that in that shit where she was announcing people with such vigor and enthusiasm. And she didn't sound like a robot. Whereas, you know, I, I, I can catch certain things like that. Which, oh, man. It's a new regime in town. <laughs> so, um, let, let me get my shit here. So the, the like the very first match that um, I saw was the um, the Brawling Brutes versus the Premium, which I did not know that Seamus was a face. He was a good guy because I'm so conditioned of Seamus being a bad guy that I didn't catch on. And mainly, I keep falling asleep on SmackDown and Raw. I don't know why. I know why I don't watch Raw because I just told you I wake up at three o'clock in the morning just to go to work. So I need to go to bed at like around eight <laughs> so I can wake up in the morning. But I was, I'm at the Starbucks, got my pumpkin spice. So um, so it was it was a pretty good match. Very back and forth action. I, I like how Gunther. Oh, I like how Walter um, was working in the ring as far as Sheamus and then you had Rich Holland and um, uh, what was the other the, 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 the little guy what was the little guy name <laughs> said Pete Dunn I would never call him Butch I think Vince McMahon's is like didn't see nothing in Pete Dunn and, and he was like Them change your character Butch and that shit do not correlate main event. It's like you, you whatever. Anyway, I was like, oh shit, back and forth action. Very them Shillelagh shot that one Shillelagh shot to the back. I think it was um Rich Holland. Or was it the, the one of the members of Imperium hit same as yeah. Either it was Kaiser or it was um the other dude that hit same as in the back. With a lady and it broke off and it looked like the thing didn't because it was like the camera angle was like did it break off because <laughs> I couldn't tell that shit that spot was awesome um man it, it was awesome so the Brutes defeated Imperium for retribution of how Walter you know Gunther um, cheated to keep his intercontinental title so this provided Seamus with a run up against um, I forgot his name again what the fuck Gunther so uh, it was a pretty good match I enjoyed it um, now we got Liv Morgan versus Ronda Rousey it was a pretty average match I ain't gonna lie. It wasn't nothing special about this match. Um, not saying that they didn't work hard. <laughs> it, it 
it it was what it was. In the back of my mind, I kind of knew Ronda was going to get back her her championship, but I also thought, you know, okay, they putting stock in Liv Morgan. This is her first title, her first big title defense on um on pay per view or premium event. And I thought they was going to ride out the Liv Morgan rave a little longer as her as champion. But if, is it just me or Liv Morgan, the whole Liv Morgan angle with Ronda Rousey chasing that title again, that's just the beginning because she started smiling. I'm talking about Liv Morgan. She started smiling when Ronda Rousey applied the uh the, I think an arm bar was it or was it a triangle choke? I'm not sure, but it, I, I was like, what? that's weird. She was laughing. And then, you know, Corey Graves like commentated like, why is she laughing? She's just lost. <laughs> she, well, it's not laughing, but she was smiling. And it was very weird. I was like, what the fuck going on here? So I, I anyway, it was pretty average at best. I didn't, it wasn't a bathroom break match. It was just semi-boring. All right. So, Drew McIntyre versus Karrion Cross in the strap match. That was a pretty good match. Even though, well, it, it's a match that don't have any rules. I I, I think <clears throat> the, the highlight, the ice on the cake about this match when, um, Scarlett got involved and pepper sprayed um, Drew McIntyre, and I was like, "Oh shit!" So this 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 feud is not going to end at Extreme Rules. I mean, Extreme Rules one of them pay per views where <clears throat> it's a it's one of the bullshit pay per views that don't matter. It was just it, it was just there, and and it I feel that. It, it was a match to extend the, the feud against these two. You know what I'm saying? But um, even though it wasn't really a good match in the way, I, 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 I give it like a C plus B, but these two people had intensity. So it was a very uh, uh, intensified match between these two, provided uh, a, a good story. Karen Cross feels jealous that Drew McIntyre, uh, Totter, Drew McIntyre was um, chosen, and 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 Karen Cross needed to, you know, like put his point out that hey, I'm good too, I'm sadistic too, I'm gonna destroy Drew McIntyre or whatever, so I reclaim his spot or whatever. So it it, it was what it was. It was a physically grueling emotional intensive intensified match to extend the story between these two all right so then we got the raw women's championship but uh bianca belair versus bailey in the ladder match now i like ladder matches like the next pe- guy i almost said next people <laughs> that didn't make sense um I actually thought Bailey was going to win because, you know, with her group, um, um, delete control, delete control. What the c- control? What the fuck that group name? <laughs> control. Fuck it. Um, I thought that Bailey was going to win it because, you know, um, you know, cause Bailey's girls got the tag team championships. I thought they, I thought that group, Fuck it, it's called a cruise control. Shit, fuck it. I know it's damage control. I was, I was just playing with you. It's damage control, but still, cruise control. All right, because that's how much that momentum is moving that group. It's in cruise control. Fuck damage control because they ain't that big and they 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 not that good. Because. I haven't seen too much from EO Sky as of late and not as much as the other one. Uh, what the fuck that um she's Samoan. What the fuck? <laughs> Dakota Kai. I I, I only person uh, and you know and Bailey just came back from an injury, so I it, hey, hey. Cruise control. 
cruise control. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, you know, um, uh, so Bianca Belair was like that bitch that had to win it. There's still stock left in her name. So, of course, she's going to, you know, survive that match and still be the, the, the Raw Women's Champion. I was like, you know, either way, I was still happy. But uh, give Bailey more airtime on TV to insensurate her character and then wait to one of the big four, like Survivor Series, to either reclaim that champion. Or, uh, can I say reclaim? She, well, she was a champion before. Yeah, to just fuck it. Just to reclaim that championship at one of the big four, like either the Royal Rumble or Survivor Series coming up, you know, so I think that's, or even WrestleMania, because I think out of those three pay-per-views, I think that's the better choice for Bayley to win any championship is like at the big four. Well, like one of the big four coming up, like the Survivor Series, which is too soon, but Royal Rumble or WrestleMania. All right. So, yeah, um, there's, there's still stock left, and Bianca Belair is still popular. I think she still moved merch. I don't know if her name uh, keeps asses in seats, though, but I think she's moving a lot of merchandise. I mean, that's all that, man. That's, that's why wrestlers are champions. You know, if you can pack the house, put asses in seats, and move merch, all right? Because wrestling is not like any other sport you know how certain champions let's let's, let's take the ufc um you have to be a good motherfucker to move up the ladder and become champion it's based on skill all right wrestling is different wrestling is like if you can put asses in seats based on your personality your mic skills to, of how the people like you to move your merch then the boss was like, either you work for Tony Khan or Triple H or Stephanie. The guy is three bosses, Nick Khan. Then you are having an opportunity to be champion. So, because it's so business. So it, it was a solid match. Had plenty, of, uh, you know, plenty of good spots with the ladders and you know like all that shit. You know. Um, um, cruise control try to interfere in the match that shit didn't work that fucking double KOD was like all, it was it was there I wouldn't say it was awesome but I was too much weight for Bianca to carry and she bullshitted that <laughs> that move but uh it is what it is Next down the line is uh, Edge versus Finn Balor. That, that was that match was emotional, especially at the end. This was one of the longest matches. I think it was, was it the longest match? I think it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was one of the longest matches on the card, and it, they utilize emotion, like especially at the end when Edge. It told the story how Ez is resilient. He's not quitting. Same as Finn Balor. But they censorated that shit on Edge. And then all, all of a sudden, Belle Phoenix got into the mix and tried to help her husband. Seeing them getting hit with some brass knuckles by that one bitch. What's her name? <laughs> um, Ripley. Um... Um, it seems like as well, it didn't seem like it was as was backed into a corner by fucking, um, judgment day. And they kind of hoisted him up to let him watch Weir Ripley or somebody. Well, it, it, it was with, uh, uh, Weir Ripley to inflict damage on his wife, Beth. Like, Finn was like, say I quit, otherwise I'm going to fuck up your wife. You know what I'm saying? Paraphrasing. That's not what he said. But he couldn't let these people hurt his wife. So he said, I, Ed said I quit in defense 
basically he was protecting his wife. But at the same time, just some days, a heel group, they went back on their word. It was like, and Rhea Ripley did a concerto to Belle Phoenix. And Belle did her job selling that spot right there because when that chair hit her head, you if you notice if you saw it, her hands was like flinching, and you know really selling the move like uh, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, that that was a very good ending to that match. I I you know oh shit, Ray Mysterio got involved, whatever you know oh shit, the funniest one I, I almost forgot when Ed's King gave <laughs> um when Ed's kicked the Dominic in the nuts. That was that was awesome. Yeah, so okay, so the main event, the main event was a, a fucking fight pit. It was very special because kind of reminiscent of UFC how they used the octagon cage, but this was like WWE, so they had to, you know they got to put their own spin on it. Too. They had to put their own spin on it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, our cage is better, bitch. Anyway, <laughs> I'm very back and forth back. So you know they they utilized the cage, especially Matt Riddle. Um, man, both participants in this match so I to beat up fucking um Dane Cormier. Like, hey, why you fighting me? Fight him. What the hell? That, that was Dane. He got fat too. I'm like, God damn. How long he been retired? Because, I mean, if you're a UFC star, you ain't got to worry about, you know, having a diet anymore. But you kind of, in a way, you got to handle a diet because you want to be healthy. But not as much if you was like actively fighting. I mean, you know, he has put on some weight, man. He's showing his age. He's probably 44. Alexa, how old is Daniel Cormier? Daniel Cormier is 43 years old. I was close. I was off by one. He's 43. I said 44. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's like four years older than me. God damn, he's he's born nineteen seventy five. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, he he was an awesome referee. He, he was he he did his job straight down the middle. You know, he had he was a fan, he, and you could tell he was a fan because he was very knowledgeable in being a ref. He knew his spots. Um, and also the ending of the match when uh, Matt Riddle won by submission. When, when Matt Riddle applied that triangle choke on Seth Rollins and then uh, Dane Cormier uh, came into the mix, he kind of came in the mix as a UFC ref, not a WWE ref. Because a WWE ref wouldn't be involved like that. Like, as soon as a person taps into submission, that a WWE rep would not like come in and break up the fucking hold. You know what I'm saying? A UFC rep would do that. So I kind of like that aspect of it. They, they kind of made it like a, a, a pro wrestling slash MMA contest. That was, that was awesome. And, you know, I said this before, how to utilize the cage. How to, I, I looked away one time while I was watching this match, and all of a sudden they was on the fucking ledge of the of the top of the cage. I'm like, how the fuck did they get up there? <laughs> um, they, they must, yeah, they must have climbed the cage, and then what the fuck? They kind of looked like Spider-Man up to that ledge on top. Um, I'm not sure what happened. But I was like, how the fuck did they get up there? <laughs> but anyway, that was good. And then all of a sudden, the White Rabbit is unveiled. And everybody knows it was Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt is fucking awesome. He came back. And I did, I, you know what? Out of all the people, when he got fired from WWE, I did not want Bray Wyatt to be in AEW. I didn't. Because I don't think he would have fit in that whole dichotomy of AEW. He, he wouldn't have fit. God damn it, fucking um, uh, Alistair Black. Alistair, that's not his name no more. What's his name? Malachi Black. He don't even fit in AEW. He needs to go back to WWE. I swear, he'd be close to his wife. You know what I'm saying? But I think he, he took time off. But, um... He don't fit there. He doesn't. He not... They, Tony Khan's not even using him right over there. Anyway, but um, 
he came back kind of incorporated his um um his playhouse buddies that was you know sur- uh, not surrounded but you know scattered through the crowd like you, you had the buzzard he, he, he had the fiend character there yeah, that was you know like in the crowd it panned over to the fiend then it panned over to the like like the rabbit and all all, all different you know playhouse characters and you see a door door opens it was Bray Wyatt with his fucking Roman mask whatever the fuck that shit was and we he, we took the mask off and, and it was Bray Wyatt I was like oh shit so I think he came back as the eater of worlds um uh, character again i'm not sure what kind of character of bray wyatt it was but i'm thinking it was the cult leader bray wyatt was the cult leader bray wyatt is my favorite that was the first fucking shit i'm you know follow the buzzers whatever that was my favorite the fiend it was good but it was like uh immovable object Bray Wyatt that he couldn't feel pain I didn't really like that it didn't it, it, it wasn't three dimensional it, 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 it didn't have enough character for me you know it was just this fucking he was there but he but it was still creative but I, I wasn't really feeling the fiend character I like the music the, the fiend music like once the fiend came and you was wrestling against the fiend you know he's gonna get your ass kicked cult leader Bray Wyatt was my favorite it had depth so yeah he he came out with trademark lantern it was awesome I wish it was more of it but no no I, I think are we gonna get some more if he's either on Raw or Smackdown I think we're gonna watch some more Bray Wyatt on TV I think I, I think he's on Smackdown yeah, yeah, yeah. Bray Wyatt is a SmackDown character. So, it is what it is, and that's how fucking stream rules ended. So, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> that's it, this video. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it, 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 was a, it was a breath of fresh air. Every special event hosted by WWE as of now has been awesome. When Vince McMahon was in control, it was like, it was boring. It was bland. It was flat. It didn't have any, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It, it was just there. It was just there to, you know, collect a check from us, you know, because we the ones buying the tickets. We the one is fucking um, buying merch and shit. It was just a cash grab for them under the helm of Vince McMahon. Triple H on the other hand is giving a story and emotion and 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 we giving him feedback on our responses and we like it. Anyway, that's it. This video is what I've gotten from WWE Extreme Rules. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Peace out.